on page 8 with Roman numeral 7. I've got uh, my scientific calculator here. I've got my periodic table and my three colors of ink. Uh, and the periodic table and the scientific calculator are going to be really handy, so please plan on having those available at all times. Uh, now let's pick up with empirical formulas, abbreviation EF. The, um, and as an example, glucose has a molecular formula, MF, of C6H12O6. Its empirical formula is, and I'll give the example, divide the numbers in the molecular formula by the greatest common, multi, the greatest common factor, which is 6 to get C1, H2O1 or CH2O. You don't have to put the ones, but it doesn't hurt either. And the empirical formula uh, is the formula with the smallest whole number, whole numbers possible. And it can be the molecular formula, but it is not always and oftentimes not. Uh, when I give quizzes and exams. Now, many compounds with different molecular formulas can have the same empirical formula. The names I'm giving here are to show you that they do have different names. They are different compounds. They do have different molecular formulas, but whenever we simplify them down to the empirical formula, all of the empirical formulas are the same for these. And so this, what allows you to differentiate an empirical formula from a molecular formula is the molar mass. So oftentimes we'll need the molar mass. To differentiate the two or to figure out what is the molecular formula when there are many possible ones. Things get more complicated as we peel back the layers of chemistry. Even compounds with the same molecular formula can have different structures. These are called structural isomers. If we look at the example of C2H6O, uh, one possible uh, structure has this type of bonding arrangement. This is what's called a Lewis structure, or it more uh, correctly, it would be a Lewis structure if it had all the uh, dots correct. Shows all the bonds, shows all the electrons. We don't get to this until chapter nine, at least. And, uh, but just to give you an idea of um, how complicated it can get and where we're going, uh, here's C2H6O. Here is C2H6O. The names of these two compounds, not that we have to know them yet, ethanol, and dimethyl ether. Um, but again, it does get a little more complicated. We're going to stick to molecular formula and empirical formulas for now. Now, molar mass is something that you should be familiar with uh, from the prerequisite for this class, but let's go over it quickly. It is the mass of one mole of molecules or formula units or atoms or anything really because uh, a mole is a number of atoms, and we'll talk about that in example B. But let's work out the molar mass of ethanol, uh, C2H6O. I go to my periodic table. The numbers under each element are the average molar mass in grams of each element. Carbon is 12.01. I have two carbons, so two times 12.01. I have six hydrogens. and I have one oxygen. Add all those up, I get two times 12.01 plus six times 1.08 plus one times 16, so just 16, 46.068. And we will do all of our molar masses to uh, four sig figs so we'll round this to 46.07. Uh, 
grams per mole. Four sig figs at least, more is fine too, but I don't want you going down to 46 or even 46.1 since we would round this to 46.1. Always carry four sig figs for your molar masses. That's the grams per mole. Next question we're gonna ask is, how many hydrogen atoms are in 32.3 grams of ethanol? And when you see it on the homework, it'll say how many hydrogen atoms using Avogadro's number, which we're about to see. And uh, because I wanna be specific, I'm not looking for moles of atoms here, I'm looking for actual numbers of atoms. The setup for this, in the way that I do it, and there are many ways to solve what are uh, typically called unit conversion problems in Gen Chem. Uh, and the first one, so, uh, or the way I like to do it is called the railroad tracks. I have 32.3 grams of ethanol, C2H6O. I know that there are 46.07 grams. in one mole of ethanol, C2H6O. Uh, from there, I'm going to hydrogen atoms. Um, let's see. I know that in one mole of C2H6O, this six tells me there are six moles of hydrogen. And we can write in atoms here as well, but we don't have to. And then in one mole of hydrogen atoms, or anything. There are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd hydrogen atoms, like so. And so the basis of my method is that the two things that are above and below each other, those are equal to each other. Those are what are called a unit conversion factor. You can do them as fractions. You can do them many ways. And I'm familiar with all of the ways. And if I were to find a new way, I would be happy to learn about it. So. Um, please do it in the way that you feel most comfortable. Let's see what we got here. So now uh, when I'm done, I multiply all the numbers across the top, divide by all the numbers at the bottom. Oh, so what's this? 32.3 times 6 times 6.022. 6 6.022, I am trying to enter times 10. Wow to the 23rd, that is a 23rd in there, I don't know if you can see it times 23rd. And on my calculator, you hit the exponential button. It doesn't say times 10 to that, that's implied, then zero, zero becomes two, three. That is how you get 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Now I need to divide by my numbers on the bottom, which are two ones, and divide by 46.07. I get 2.23 sig figs, which are always good in lecture and discussion, exams and quizzes. Labs will be better than that, we'll be exact with our sig figs. But to three sig figs, and that's the number of sig figs in the problem statement, 2.53 times 10 to the 24 hydrogen atoms, or atoms of hydrogen is our answer. Ah, more about sig figs. So sig figs, rules for this class. You should be familiar with sig figs from your prerequisite for this. Uh, I'm always happy to help with sig figs if you ever have any questions. And in lab, we will be stickler. In lecture, discussion, homework, quizzes, and exams, molar masses should always have four sig figs. We mentioned this already. And your final answer for the problem should always have three significant figures. That's usually what I'll give you in the problem statement too. Exception, pH will always have two decimal places. And of course, it's always okay to have the correct number but if you want of sig figs. But if you want to be safe, go with three sig figs or two decimal places for pH. And here you go. In lab, we'll always do them correctly. Now we're moving towards what are called empirical formula problems. Our next part, uh, our stop on our voyage, is percent composition by mass. Uh, it's a common enough um, type of problem that there are at least three different ways to note percent by mass. First, then percent mass divided by mass, and percent weight divided by weight. Um, we use grams for our masses here, 
and not pounds or other units for weights. But oftentimes they're, they're used interchangeably no matter how it's done. What is the mass percent carbon in benzoic acid? Our formula, percent carbon in benzoic acid is going to equal the mass of carbon in benzoic acid divided by the mass of benzoic acid and I don't know why I wrote it out but there it is it's about the same so no savings to write the name or the formula times 100 percent and the most convenient way to do this calculation is on a mole basis so we'll use molar masses for each of them I have the mass of carbon and this is all of the carbon so there are six plus one there are seven carbons and from our periodic table there are 12.01 grams per mole for carbon so that are all seven of the carbons then if we do seven carbons Oop, seven times 12.01 plus I have six hydrogens and uh, two oxygens so plus two times 16 I get 122.1 times 100% multiplying across the top, dividing by that, and then times 100%, I get, well, rounding 68.9% carbon in benzoic acid. And that's 68.9% carbon by mass, etc etc similarly we can ask uh, the, a, the same question for iron in iron carbonate or iron 2 carbonate this is what I call a companion problem it's almost identical to the one that we just worked and the answers are posted in the learning management system look for it there good practice we're going to use percents by mass for a slightly different problem now and this is a problem I, I was looking at that I came across on the internet. It turns out that there was Cheer there's Cheerios, and uh, I had a bowl of Cheerios for breakfast this morning. But they also came out with Cheerios protein. And um, so this is actually a photograph of a Cheerios label uh, from that I just actually took a picture of in my house. You can see that inside uh, Cheerios there are five grams of protein. And this is a label, we never bought it, but uh, sure enough that inside Cheerios Protein, this is the nutritional label, it has seven grams of protein. And so they were marketing it under Cheerios Protein, and they said that's a great way to get more protein. Well, um, I said, let's, we can, we can figure this out by math. Now, uh, one thing to note is not only is regular Cheerios uh, five grams of protein, it is also a uh, serving size of 39 grams. On the other hand, the serving size for the protein Cheerios is 55 grams. So if we eat the same mass, <laughs> uh, let's see what happens. So here's Cheerios. Cheerios has five grams of protein and 39 grams of Cheerios and Cheerios protein has 7 grams of protein and 55 grams Cheerios Cheerios protein and so we can figure out the percent by mass percent by mass in this case is going to be percent protein and we'll use mass by mass. It's going to equal 5 grams of protein 
divided by 39 grams of sample, in this case Cheerios, times 100%. Do the same thing over here. And when we run the numbers, so five grams divided by 39 times 100, I get 12.8%. And seven divided by 55 times 100, I get 12.7% protein. Mass by mass, mass by mass. So you can buy Cheerios protein, and if you eat the same amount, you'll get the same amount of protein. Uh, they, if you Google it, you will see they were accused of some deceptive advertising tactics. There may have been a lawsuit involved. I was no part of that. Um, but in general, we can analyze, when we do chemical calculations, we can analyze real-world problems and see the truth in advertising statements for different manufacturers' claims, which I think is pretty cool. Next problem is going to be uh, about an uh, intravenous or IV bag. Uh, it says 0.9% uh, sodium chloride. How many grams of sodium chloride are there in a 1 liter, 1.00 liter bag of this solution? Assume that the density of the solution is 1.00 grams per milliliter, the same as water. This is a common assumption. It is not perfect, but it is a good assumption that we will work with. Now, I don't always know how to uh, approach these problems. Uh, you may not either, but when I see a 0.9% sodium chloride, Uh, I'm going to plug it in here. I'm going to write out the definition of the uh, percent by mass, which is going to be grams of sodium chloride over grams of sample. In this case, uh, this is going to how many grams are there in a one liter bag? So grams of bag. It's a completely general formula times 100%, we can even write an IV bag. Now, and then what we do is we just fill things in until we get to the right answer. So much of Chem 400 and so much of chemistry and science in general is about reading the question. So I've got, it is 0.9%, I've got that. How many grams of sodium chloride? That's what I'm gonna be missing, that's gonna be my X. Uh, then a one liter bag, well, I have one liter and I have the density and I know that I want grams, so I will convert 1.00 liters uh, into milliliters first. So uh, that's gonna be equal to 1,000 milliliters. And we can set up a unit conversion for that too, if necessary. And then if it's 1,000 milliliters and it's one gram per milliliter, or 1.00 gram per milliliter, then we also get 1,000 grams. Until we fill that in. And then comes uh, algebra. So uh, what I would suggest is we want to cross multiply here. We have 0.9 times 1,000 equals 1 times x. Uh, Oh, don't forget the 100 over here. And <laughs> common mistake, but this is on the top. So I'm gonna just sort of slide it up on the top there. So it's actually X times 100. There we go. Or you can cross these out as well to simplify. Again, there are lots of ways to do this math. We just have to find one that works for each of us all the time. All right, so now I, I prefer to get the numbers there then actually do the math. I have 0.9 times 1,000, divide both sides by 100. And I get nine. 
and we'll always have three sig figs in our answers. Uh, 9.00 grams sodium chloride uh, is a fine set of uh, units for the answer. So it's pretty universally uh, helpful, this kind of formula that applies to many situations. And if you have a question about how to use it, try plugging it into the formula. And so you, you do have to know the formula. Um, these next two problems, uh, molar mass of calcium chloride and how many chloride atoms are in 32.3 grams of calcium chloride. Both of these are going to be companion.